We're the nation, not the dumb evolution religion. Ron Rumble, Kent Hovind official. Odyssey, Kent Hovind official. Gen on YouTube, Genesis Baptist Church and Doc Dino. And our website, drdino.com. And our phone number, 855-BIG-DINO. We like dinosaurs. We want to use dinosaurs for God's glory instead of teach kids they live millions of years ago, which is not true. Okay. So I wrote a series of books when I was unjustly incarcerated for nine years called Why on Earth Did God Let This Happen? You will have times in your life where you wonder why God let this happen. I think there's going to be a total of seven books in the series when we're done working on artwork. Now, oh, you found one of them. Good, good, good. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Let's see. I wrote a book about our in unjustness of our prison system in the book, The Kennel, about the prison system, comparing it to a dog kennel. It's a for-profit business. People who own stock in the prison system get rich the more they lock up, and the longer they lock them up, the more money they get. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, so if you ever find yourself with time to kill, like I did, I suggest you dig deep into God's Word and find millions of treasure gems He's hidden there for those who seek Him. So, something bad happens to you, you got three choices. Let it define you, let it destroy you, or let it strengthen you. Your choice. Just trying to make sense of it all. Sometimes you'll have those days where you say, Lord, why did this happen to me? Okay, let's see. April 1st was our uh, a a a national holiday for National Atheist Day. Coming up in two weeks on the 16th, going to be our uh, holiday to br uh, bring everybody home. who can help us build this place. DAL Homecoming. If you help build or help support us, come on down, see what's happened around here. God's been good. Let's see. May, all kinds of holidays in May. Do you know there's Honor Teachers Day? We have another debate coming up May 4th. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, which means the 5th of May, coming up. Number, May 6th is Honor Your Nurse Day, Military Spouse Day, all kinds of stuff. Just about every day has a holiday. It makes, they make holiday. I couldn't believe it. Pancake Day. Everybody eat pancakes. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. June, we got several holidays coming up. And uh, so subscribe to our channel. Oh, and our boot camp coming up in June. I forgot. Hey, brother. Welcome. You didn't get the tour yet, did you? You did? Okay. Good, good, good. Good to have you. Uh, so we are straight north of Pensacola, 70 miles in Lenox, Alabama. Come on by and give us a visit. Uh, a few miles off I-65. Let's see. You have all kinds of tours, the real tour, the science center tour, the farm tour, and the playground set the record tour. Then we go walking around after church. Be a good night for it tonight. One lap around, one mile. If anybody wants to go with, join me. Come uh, help us here. We have 259 baptized so far. If you want to help us win souls, you can support our ministry. We stay open for free. Don't charge anything. It costs us a fortune to run, but we don't charge anything. Uh, let's see. If you want to help us, go to drdino.com. Say, I like what they're doing. I'm going to help them win souls. Make any checks to CSE, Creation Science Evangelism. And don't support uh, YouTube. Uh, what's that? Uh, Super, chat. Super Chat. Yeah, where they're not giving us the money. Okay. 18-hour video series on science in the Bible, if you want to get that. Uh, 50 bucks. And get our woe series about what's going to happen. The Bible says all these things happen, talking about what happened to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. All these things happen for ensamples. Strange word. There are examples and ensamples. Some's on the outside, some's on the inside. That's another long story. But they are written for our admonition. Job had everything go wrong for his. He was one of great inspiration to me when I was in prison. Just about everything went wrong for Job. He had 10 children, all died at the same time. His wife turned against him. His friends turned against him and spoke evil about him. He lost all of his wealth, lost his health. He was covered in boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. If everything goes wrong for you, you're going to give up serving God or keep trusting him. That's up to you. Anyway, how many parables are there in the Bible? Gotquestions.org. So they said there's about 100 parables in the Bible. Some say... 250, 30 parables Jesus talked about. In almost every culture, it's okay to use stories, parables, to get your point across. Okay, so we're going to go to uh -oh, slide number 207 and start tonight. Some of the stories I wrote from prison. I didn't write the Psalm 2, but why, why do the heathen rage? The people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. There have always been people making their plans like Pinky and the Brain. We're going to rule the world. And God's laughing at it. So Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote a fabulous book called The Gulag Archipelago. Have you read, anybody read that one? 
Isn't that amazing? I read it like six times, okay? Alexander Solzhenitsyn was a Russian outspoken novelist. He wrote books. A prominent Soviet dissident, he was against the communist system, like anybody with a brain should be. He was outspoken critic of communism and helped to raise the global awareness of political repression in the Soviet Union, in particular, the gulag, that's their prison system. The Soviet gulag system was unbelievable. Tentative historical consensus is that 18 million people passed through the gulag system from 1930 to 1953. One and a half to 1.7 million died just from being incarcerated in the gulag. They would build prison camps way up north where it's cold. Don't even have to worry about you escaping because if you escape, the cold will get you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the deaths of 5.7 to perhaps 7 million Soviet people in the Soviet famine were responsible here in the Soviet collectivism of agriculture. The Soviet, Stalin just decided the government owns everything. All your crops belong to us. There's no incentive to work hard and plow your crop and pull the weeds if you don't get the profit. Private property ownership is the foundation in the Bible and in common sense for success, okay? Anyway, Stalin. At the conclusion of the conference, a tribute to Comrade Stalin was called for. Everybody clap for Joseph Stalin, okay. Everyone stood up just as everyone had leaped to his feet during the conference at every mention of his name. This is Alexander Solzhenitsyn writing this. For three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, the stormy applause rising to an ovation continued. But palms were getting sore and raised arms were already aching. And the older people were panting from exhaustion. It was becoming insufferably silly, even to those who really adored Stalin. However, who would dare to be the first to stop? After all, the KGB guys were standing in the hall applauding and watching to see who would quit first. And in the obscure small hall unknown to the leader, the applause went on six, seven, eight minutes. They were done for. The goose was cooked. They couldn't stop now till they collapsed with heart attacks. At the rear of the hall, which was crowded, they could, of course, cheat a bit, less, clap less frequently, less vigorously, but not so eagerly. Who, but up there on the podium, presidium, or the podium, where everyone could see them, the director of a local paper factory, an independent, strong-minded man, stood with the presidium, aware of all the falsity and all the impossibility of the situation, he kept still, he still kept on applauding. Nine minutes, 10. In anguish, he watched the secretary of the district party committee, but the latter dared not stop. Insanity to the last man. With make-believe enthusiasm on their faces, looking at each other with faint hope, the district leaders were just going to go on and on applauding till they fell where they stood till they were carried out of the hall on stretchers. And even then, those who were left would not falter. Then after 11 minutes, the director of the paper factory assumed a business-like expression and sat down on his seat. And oh, a miracle took place. Where had, where had the universal, uninhibited, indescribable enthusiasm gone? To a man, everyone else stopped dead and sat down. They had been saved. The squirrel had been smart enough to jump off his revolving wheel. That, however, was how they discovered who the independent people were. And that was how they went about eliminating them. That same night, the factory director was arrested. They easily pasted 10 years on him on the pretext of something quite different. But after he had signed Form 206, the final document of the interrogation, his interrogator reminded him, don't ever be the first one to stop applauding. Stalin was one of those pinky in the brain folks, okay? What are we gonna do tonight, brain? Same thing we do every night, pinky, try to take over the world. So July 8th, 2011, I wrote this story. Morning, another beautiful day in God's world. Satan wants to rule the world so badly. These next few years may get rough as he makes his final play with the new world order. If you read Psalm two, it puts it all in perspective. God is laughing at pinky in the brain's wannabes plans to rule the world. Fear not, win souls and love God today. Soon, nothing else will matter. We have new people coming into prison here every day with such outrageous sentences who have such great needs. We need to read more stories such as those by Alexander Solzhenitsyn that we might understand what's happening in America as she descends 
to a police state like Germany and Russia did. Alexander Solzhenitsyn tells of a man put in prison in Russia for being the first one to stop clapping for Stalin. Locking up as many as you can, as long as you can, seems to be the mentality of anti-freedom governments. Thanks for your prayers. Keep the main thing the main thing. Serve God. According to the American Civil Liberty Union, 50,000 federal, state, and local legal restrictions. Did you know there are 50,000 laws? Makes it difficult to reintegrate back into society those who are associated with the American prison system, which costs taxpayers $80 billion a year. In my book, The Kennel, I expose all this. And under God's system of law, no prisons. Fine them, beat them, or kill them. Simple. You steal my sheep, you pay back four sheep. Everybody goes home happy. Huh? For others, you get a beating, never more than 40 lashes, and has to take place in front of the judge. The judge has to see what their punishment does to the guy. Today, the judge just says, ah, oh, five years, 10 years, 20 years, just a number to them, and you're gone, and your family's destroyed, and your life is destroyed. In a typical year, 600,000 people enter prison gates, but people go to jail over 10 million times each year. When I become king, we're shutting it down. I, could, I went to visited a prison today to see about going in to speak there, the one uh, down here near Atmore. Stop to try to talk, to talk to the chaplain. Uh, if I become king, I'm going to shut it all down. I'm going to call up each have you, call up each person. What was your crime, and what, how much time did they give you? Okay. Then it's a simple matter of we're going to give you a choice. Do you want to keep serving your sentence, or do you want 20 lashes? I guarantee you nearly all would take the 20 lashes, and it'd be a better deterrent to not do it again. Do you tell your kid when they do something wrong, kid? Stay in your room for the next 300 years. No, I'm going to give you five swats for what you did, and let's get back to work, right? Get it over with, Dad. Come on. Okay, anyway. So, Casey Anthony, American murder mystery. Anybody remember the story of Casey Anthony? She was accused of murdering her daughter. The trial was in the news all the time because they're covering up the real news, something else. Finally, she was found not guilty. Her daughter had drowned in a swimming pool, apparently, and she hid the body in the trunk of her car or something like that. I forget how it all went, but I thought, wait a minute. I was reading this story because it happened while I was in prison. I said, how ironic is this? These are the countries where abortion is broadly legal. Anybody can kill their baby before it's born. Hmm. Yellow, it's allowed, but has some conditions. In red countries, it's illegal or restricted. Hmm. Let's see. 664,000 abortions in 2013. 200 abortions for every 1,000 live births, one out of five. Huh. The last year for which the CDC and Guttmacher, whoever that is, reported a yearly national total for abortions is 2020. And neither organization reported a large change from the previous year. CDC says there were 620,000 abortions nationally in the District of Columbia in 47 states. One and a half percent increase. Huh. Guttmacher national total of 2020 was 930,000. Nearly a million babies a year being aborted. What is going on here? Ironic things that make me say, hmm, I wrote this article from prison, July 4th, the day we're supposed to celebrate our freedom. Mm -hmm. I should write a book on ironic things that make me say, hmm, isn't it ironic that Casey Anthony is on trial for murdering her daughter, and she should be, at least on trial, okay? Yet every day, 4,500 mothers murder their babies by abortion, and the laws of our land not only condone it, but prosecute those who try to stop this evil. I bet YouTube tries to shut down channels that speak out against it, do they? What's wrong with you guys? God will be the final judge. Isn't it ironic that America is the land of the free, yet we lock up 10 times more people per capita than just about every other country. America has 5% of the world's population, 25% of the world's prisoners. Crime needs to be punished, but God's word never calls for prison. Hmm. You think maybe a bigger picture we need to look at? Isn't it ironic that Congress tries to pass laws like H.R. 1475 to cut prison time to 65% for nonviolent offenders, and H.R. 23 to cut prison time to 50% for offenders over 45, the biggest force opposing those laws being passed is the same group that profits the most from the prison system. The Justice Department, that's just ICE, the federal employees, 
Why would they oppose a law like that? Why would federal employees oppose a law? Because they can own stock in the system. Isn't it ironic that God created a perfect world, gave man freedom to choose, and after man chose to sin, God still loved him. In spite of our sin, God still loves us and wants to use us to further his kingdom. Hmm. Isn't it ironic the most fun thing to do in the entire world, leading others to Christ, is the one least done by God's children? Friday, as I led Eric to Christ in, here in the prison, the same joy flooded my soul that flooded it in the tent at the heart of Illinois Fair in 1969 when I led my first soul to Christ. I don't understand why so many of God's children are more worried about who hits a ball into a hole in the dirt than if their neighbors go to hell for eternity. Hmm. Hope you enjoy your freedom this 4th of July. Pray I can get mine back. What on earth are you doing, for heaven's sake? Good question. Hello, friends. June 14th. Yesterday was quite a day. I'm in Florence, Colorado now at the new camp. By the way, they moved me 32 times while I was in prison. My last night in Oklahoma, I was able to lead my cellmate to Christ before we went to sleep. He's being deported back to Mexico in a few weeks. It was so sweet to hear him pray for God's forgiveness and salvation. I never tire of that. At 5 a.m., they came and said, pack up. I went to R&D and was put in a 28 by 32 holding pen with 50 others. While there, I met Ray and was able to lead him to Christ as well. It was like picking ripe fruit. God had softened his heart. At 7, I was put in shackles again and loaded on the plane. We flew all the way to California to drop off and pick up other prisoners. And then, after an hour on the ground without air conditioning, we flew back to Colorado. Then we boarded a bus for our hour ride our ride here. Finally, at 5 p.m., I got the shackles off. Only 10 hours in shackles this time compared to 12 hours last time. The system needs serious overhaul. The new camp is nice, lots to do, and 550 guys. It's next to a low security prison with 1,000 men, and next to one of the highest security level prisons, a supermax, with some Al Qaeda folks there. New mission field. There's my address. People kept writing me from prison. I would Try to update everybody on through, through the to my uh, website and through blogs. Okay, let's see. Gas prices. Jim. Hey, Brother Hoven, what do you think about the way gas has gone up over the last few years? Kent, what makes you think it's gone up? Jim, man, it's gone from a dollar seventy to four dollars a gallon. I'd say that's going up. Kent, I think you're looking at it all wrong, Jim. Gas is cheaper now than when I was a kid. I remember getting gas for my go-kart for 17 cents a gallon during the gas war in East Peoria. Jim, how can you say it's cheaper? Don't you know anything about math? Four dollars is more than 17 cents, you know. Kent, actually, I taught high school math and science for 15 years and know quite a bit about it. Let me explain why gas has gone down. Please do. Kent, when I was a kid, a $20 gold piece weighed one ounce and was worth about 30 bucks. Today, that same $20 gold piece is worth $14.30. By the way, anybody know what a one ounce gold coin goes for now? Almost $2,000. Wow. Type in spot price of gold, okay? But when I wrote this in 2011, it was $1,400 an ounce. $20 gold piece is exactly an ounce, theoretically. At $4 a gallon, that ounce of gold will buy 358 gallons of gas today. Jim, I'm with you. Kent. Back when an ounce of gold was 30 bucks at 17 cents a gallon, that ounce of gold would only buy 167 gallons, or about half as much. So 2,000 pennies in 20 bucks, right? Jim, right? At 14.30 an ounce, gold, uh, a gold piece, each one two thousandth, that's a penny, is worth 71 cents. So it only takes 5.6 cents to buy a gallon of gas these days, based on the gold standard. Gas has gone way down, not up. It's about half the price it used to be. Jim, so gold has gone up, right? Kent, well, it looks that way, but actually no. The dollar has gone down. They keep printing more dollars, so they become like wallpaper. Gold stays about the same, but the dollar value goes down as the economy crumbles. Jim, so we should invest in gold, right? Kent, maybe a little, but there's an even better investment for the trying times that are coming. Jim, what's that? Kent. When Jesus sent out his disciples to preach them, he told to preach, he told them, provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. He promised he would provide their needs. He had already told them not to worry about what they would eat or drink or what they would wear. He said they should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. 
Rough times are coming to planet Earth, and this will be a test to see if we can trust the Lord to provide. God told Elijah to go hide by a brook for a while, and ravens brought him food. Then God told him to go live with a poor widow and her son, and he miraculously he provided miraculously for them as there as well. I think we're headed into times where those who those close to the Lord will get to see God's miraculous provisions again. Most American Christians are pretty soft and nowhere near ready to live totally by faith. Saving up tons of gold won't help. Jesus told of a time coming when the rich men would weep and howl. For the miseries come upon you. Your riches are corrupted. Your garments are moth-eaten. Your silver and gold is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. Is it not possible? It's not possible to save up enough to cover all the problems that are coming soon. Jim, so what, what should we do? Can't exactly what Jesus said. Seek his kingdom first and he will take care of all those things you need. God blesses us with the privilege of witnessing for him. Win souls and you'll be wise. Proverbs 11. Jim, so don't worry about the $4 gallon gas. Kent, I'd be lots more concerned about staying really close to the Lord. He can supply even if gas is $10,000 a gallon. Stay under the umbrella of his protection and all will be fine. Jim, sounds simple. Kent, it is. I wouldn't get too excited about gas or gold. We will need no gas in heaven and gold will be used to blacktop the streets we walk on. Calm down, it's fine. New CSC Magazine. My son, uh, called, he, when I took, went to prison, he took over things for me there and it started the cre uh, Current, or the Current Magazine. I got a copy of the new CSC Magazine called Current in the mail. Wow, I was blown away. This can't be from the same son who, when he was 11, well, never mind. Okay. You did an awesome job, son. I'm proud to be your dad. Keep spreading the creation message and winning souls. Time is short. If any of you are not on the mailing list to get a copy of this brand new summer issue of Current, get on it now. Tell your friends and even enemies to get one. Great articles and project update. Such a joy to see the ministry we began 20 years ago keep going and growing and bringing thousands to the Savior. That's all that will matter in a thousand years. I was informed this week I'm being moved this Friday. We don't know the location yet. The statement will be published as soon as we know. Thanks for all your prayers. Until then, keep serving the Lord. Let's see, I wrote a whole series of stories. The most fun thing to do in the world for my granddaughter, Stephanie. We'll save and start that next time. Okay, come visit for our seventh anniversary of getting this property. Yay, DIL has actually been open since 1989, but it was in Pensacola. Now it's here in Lenox, Alabama. Come on, any questions or comments from here? Better control? Let's go walk around the lake, one mile walk. We can walk and talk and we can't shoot the breeze because how, how do you know when you hit it? Anyway, see you tomorrow. Bye.